Hello Dallas Fire Rescue family. This is one of your weekly updates during this COVID-19 situation. Today we will be presented information from Dr. Isaacs, our medical director, to give you a little information about COVID-19, exactly what it is, how to stay safe, and how to wear your PPE. Dr. Isaacs will give you a brief history on COVID-19, how it affects your body, and how you can stay safe. Hello Dallas Fire Rescue family, I'm Dr. Marshall Isaacs, your medical director, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about COVID-19. As many of you know, in late 2019, a new virus was found to be causing severe respiratory illness in China. This was found by scientists to be a new coronavirus. Now, there are many coronaviruses. Some of them cause disease only in animals and some cause disease in humans. The one you know best is the common cold, which is caused by a coronavirus. The virus that was identified for the first time in humans in late 2019 in China had never been seen in humans before, and therefore it was given the name novel coronavirus, meaning simply that it was a new coronavirus. What was found in the early days of this pandemic in China was that the majority of people who came into contact with this new virus had very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. About 80% were found to be asymptomatic or just have mild symptoms similar to a bad cold or flu. But about another 15 to 19% of people who got infected with COVID-19 experienced severe symptoms requiring hospitalization. And about 1 to 2 percent of people infected with COVID-19 succumbed to their illness due to respiratory failure. Over the past four months, as the virus has moved from Asia to Europe and now throughout the United States, we've learned a lot more about COVID-19 but there are still many, many things we don't know. What we do know is that it's a primarily a respiratory virus, meaning its primary mode of infection is when you inhale virus particles from respiratory droplets that come from an infected person, either through a sneeze, a cough, close contact, or if that infected individual sneezes, coughs, or comes in contact with some surface, and then you touch that surface, and then with your hand, touch your face, particularly around the area of your nose or mouth. That's the primary means of how this virus is spread. Once in our bodies, COVID-19 attaches to cells within the lung and that can lead to viral pneumonia, and in some cases, a very severe form of pneumonia, acute respiratory distress sy syndrome, which results in profound hypoxia, low oxygen levels, and then the need for mechanical ventilation. While this only occurs in a very small portion of individuals, and then usually those over 60 years of age, or with underlying medical problems such as diabetes, heart failure, lung disease, or those that are immunocompromised either due to cancer, HIV, or some other severe illness. Some people who are still young and healthy get severe forms of this disease. So the bottom line is we want you to do everything within your power both at work and out at home or in the community to avoid coming in contact with COVID-19. The best defense against COVID-19 is to simply not come in contact with it. So how do you do that? Well, in your home or when you do need to go out to the grocery store or some other essential task, you need to make sure that you wash your hands frequently especially after touching items that are not from your personal home 
You should also consider wearing a simple non-surgical cloth mask as a simple barrier when you're out in public. That keeps respiratory droplets from others from coming into contact with your nose and mouth. It's not perfect because there's no filtering, but it is an added barrier against COVID-19 when out in public. Of course, you know about social distancing, and that means maintaining at least six feet of separation between you and others. Now, the chief is gonna talk a little bit about social distancing in the fire station, which is challenging to say the least, because you live together, you sleep together, you eat together, and you use common restrooms. But I can't stress the importance of maintaining social distancing even within the fire station. And there may soon be a recommendation that you wear masks when close together in the fire station or when responding in apparatus. From a patient care standpoint, we've given you good education and policy to best protect yourself from becoming exposed. And now it's up to you to follow that policy. First and foremost, always check to make sure at the beginning of the shift that you have an adequate supply of PPE. And if you don't, make sure you notify your station officer and your EMS officer. Because COVID-19 is now known to be within the Dallas community, I want you to assume that every patient you run on potentially is infected with COVID-19. So as you approach your patient, I want you to think either they appear to be not critically ill or they appear to be critically ill. For the ones that do not appear to be critically ill, one paramedic shall place a simple surgical mask to cover their nose and mouth and gloves as you approach the patient up to a distance of six feet and then hand the patient a second surgical mask and say to them, humor me. Because of the virus, I'm asking you to put this on while we begin to talk and have them place that simple surgical mask over their nose and mouth. This way, you can then begin to interview them to determine whether they might be at higher risk of infection with COVID-19. If the patient reports to you that they've had fever, cough, shortness of breath of any type, even if they have a history of asthma, COPD, or heart failure, you should assume they're at higher risk of being infected with COVID-19. Any patient that says they've been exposed to COVID-19 or that they've been tested for COVID-19, at that time, I want you to stop and apply a full gown to cover your uniform and then full eye, nose, mouth protection, goggles or a face shield, and an N95 mask. And of course, you already have gloves on. The minimum number of members necessary to care for that patient should care for them. If one paramedic can safely do that, that's okay. And only one paramedic riding in the back with that patient to the hospital. For the patient that is critically ill or may be critically ill, so for those that as you approach are laying down on the ground, unconscious, unresponsive, or you know you're walking into a CPR or a situation in which advanced airway management is going to likely take place, all members who are going to participate in the care or resuscitation of that patient should don full PPE, including the gown, gloves, eye, nose, mouth protection, N95 mask. Today, you will continue to care for patients as you would pre-COVID. However, when it comes to application of so-called aerosol generating procedures, for example, nebulized medication, CPAP, bag valve mask. These are high-risk procedures in the setting of COVID-19. They're most likely to generate respiratory particles that you can come in contact with. 
So we want to minimize the use of these aerosol generating procedures and there's an, a recent EMS alert on the Biotel website and on the IDS regarding how to safely use aerosol generating procedures. Full PPE is mandatory when doing them and if you think your patient is not moderately to significantly ill, you can forego doing these procedures if it will not lead to a problem with the patient until they've arrived at the hospital. A reminder that for any patient you have any suspicion might be infected with COVID-19, it is imperative that you contact Biotel as early as you can in the transport so that the receiving hospital is aware that the patient's en route to that hospital. Biotel will communicate your information to the receiving hospital so they can be prepared for the receipt of that patient. And then, once you arrive at a receiving hospital, follow their directions for how they want you to manage that patient before coming into the emergency department. Many hospitals today have different procedures that they want you to follow to keep you, the patient, and their staff safe. Once you've completed handoff of your patient to receiving hospital staff, assuming you've donned appropriate PPE and doff it very carefully so you don't become exposed when taking off or removing your PPE, it's important that you know how to effectively disinfect the rescue, other apparatus, equipment, supplies, and your uniform and you will continue to receive updated best practice information regarding these issues. If you have any questions about these procedures now, make sure you contact your EMS supervisor and your station officer for further direction. The number one priority for the Office of the Medical Director, myself, your Deputy Medical Directors, Dr. Brandon Morchetti and Dr. Brian Miller, are to do our best to make sure that you have good education, good training, good awareness, and an adequate supply of PPE so you can best take care of your patients. In addition, we are working night and day to look at what other big cities, large fire departments, and EMS agencies are doing to make sure we keep our paramedics and our firefighters safe. Your health and safety is our primary concern and we will continue to develop and issue additional education and recommendations so that you can safely care for your patients in the era of COVID-19. So stay calm, stay informed, stay safe. As you've heard from Dr. Isaacs, we're trying to keep everyone educated, united, and safe. It's important for you to know that all we talk about and all we think about is your safety. Until next time, be safe, be careful, and I'll see you real soon.